all of us use emails, right? And all of us also get lots of spam mails and these spam mails can be very problematic if you are not attentive. But luckily, our email providers do a great job of detecting the spams automatically. And in almost all of the cases, email providers detect the spam correctly. So how do your email providers detect whether a mail is a spam or not? Well, this is a classical machine learning application. So let's see what's going on under the hood. Suppose you already have mails with you and some experts have manually labeled them as spam or non-spam. So in this example, green ones are non-spam and red ones are spam. So these are the examples that are already available to you. Therefore, this is our available data where we have certain email features for all of the emails such as sender URL, mail contents or sender location. We also have associated label for each mail means whether they are spam or not. So now on the given data, we apply learning mechanism to understand the pattern. And once we have the pattern with us, then in real time, when a new mail arrives, we match the new email features with the pattern and based on the pattern, we predict whether the new mail is spam or non-spam. Well, even though it is a spam detection example, but this is how most of the machine learning applications work. You take data, you learn the pattern and then use the pattern to make predictions. The data we use to understand or learn the pattern is known as training data because we are using this data to train or learn. And inside the training data, we have two components. First component is the input features. So for the spam detection problem, the email features that we talked about, such as sender URL, email content are input features. The second component of the training data is the output feature. And in this example, the output feature is the associated label with each mail, whether it's a spam or non-spam. Input features are also referred as predictors because they are used to predict the output. And for output, you may also hear the term response or outcome. So overall, you can think the training data as a spreadsheet where you have columns for input features and then you have a column for output feature. And each row can be considered as a row that represents one observation or one sample or one example. So overall, we are representing each mail with the help of some input features. This process is formally known as representation. So you represent your example with the help of certain attributes or features. Also, if you look at the block diagram once again, then you can see we are using the pattern to detect the spam on the new or unseen email for which we only have input feature information. We don't have the output level. This is what we want to predict based on the learned pattern. If you will have to predict the level of one such email that is already part of the training data, then you could have directly done that using a simple lookup in the training data and you don't need any pattern. However, the whole point of learning the pattern is to make the predictions on the unseen cases where you don't have prior information about the output label. This is a very core concept of machine learning and is formally called as generalization. You want to learn a pattern that can make predictions on unseen cases means the pattern should generalize well on unseen cases. So you can think the unseen case as a test case. So in the test data, you will only have access to the input data. The output data is not available to you beforehand. In fact, you need to make predictions to get the predicted output.